From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! So when we call on the wealthiest among us to pay just a little more in taxes to fund universal pre-K and after-school programs... We aren't threatening anyone's success. We are asking those who've done very well to ensure that every child has the same opportunity to do just as well as they have. A tale of two cities. New York elects Bill de Blasio to be its first Democratic mayor in two decades. We'll look at how he rose to power with help from the Working Families Party, an independent political coalition backed by labor unions. Then change the mascot. Pressure mounts on the Washington Redskins to change their name. It's pretty sad to say when we're the first people of this continent and we're still being treated as, uh, you know, like second class. As hundreds protest in Minneapolis outside the Redskins-Vikings game, we'll speak with Clyde Bellacourt, founder and director of the American Indian Movement. And we'll speak with sports columnist Dave Zirin about the NFL's bully problem. Then voters in Washington state defeat a measure that would have required mandatory labeling of genetically engineered foods. We have a right to know if an ingredient is artificial or not. We have a right to know if juice is from concentrate or not. We have a right to know if salmon is wild caught or farm raised. We have a basic right to know important things about our food. We'll speak with David Bronner, grandson of the founder of Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps, which was the largest donor to campaign to support GMO labeling. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. One of the most intense storms in world history has hit the Philippines. Typhoon Haiyan has already killed at least four people, injured several others, and prompted millions to flee. President Benigno Aquino has warned the country faces calamity. With sustained winds of up to 199 miles per hour, it may be the most powerful storm ever to make landfall. On many islands, streets are flooded, communication is cut off, trees are down, and power is out. After battering the Philippines, Haiyan is on track to hit Vietnam and Laos over the weekend. Iran, the United States, and five other countries appear to be on the brink of an agreement to curb Iran's nuclear efforts in return for easing crippling Western sanctions. Secretary of State John Kerry is arriving in Geneva today in a bid to finalize the agreement. On Thursday, White House spokesperson Jay Carney signaled the easing of sanctions would be limited. In exchange for concrete, verifiable measures to address the P5-plus-1's concerns during the first step, the P5-plus-1 would consider limited, targeted, and reversible relief that does not affect our core sanctions architecture. That core sanctions architecture would be maintained until there is a final, comprehensive, verifiable agreement that resolves the international community's concerns. In Los Angeles, more than 50 people were arrested outside a newly opened Walmart store Thursday night in what organizers hailed as the largest single act of civil disobedience ever against the retailer. The workers are protesting what they call poverty wages, demanding minimum pay of $25,000 a year. Surrounded by police and riot gear, they sat down in a circle on Cesar Chavez Avenue and refused to move, shutting down the street. It's the latest in a wave of recent acts actions targeting Walmart. President Obama has apologized to Americans who are losing their current health insurance plans under his health reform law, despite his repeated assurances they could keep their policies. Obama issued the apology in an interview with NBC News. I am sorry that they uh, you know, are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. We've got to work hard to make sure that uh, they know uh, we hear them and that we're going to do everything we can uh, to deal with folks who find themselves uh, in a tough position as a consequence of this. The Obama administration is reportedly set today to release long-awaited rules requiring equal insurance coverage for mental health and addiction. 
The Pentagon says reports of sexual assault in the military increased by 46 percent in the past fiscal year. In total, more than 3,500 sexual assaults were reported from last October through June, compared to roughly 2,400 over the same period the previous year. Pentagon officials claim the spike shows more victims are coming forward, but sexual assaults are still dramatically underreported in military ranks. A recent survey estimated 26,000 people were sexually assaulted in 2011 alone. A new report released Thursday by the ACLU and Service Women's Action Network revealed victims of military sexual assault continue to receive government disability benefits at a far lower rate than those who suffer non-sexual trauma. A British judge has ordered the release of audio from a helmet-mounted camera that captured the execution of an Afghan man by three British soldiers in 2011. The soldiers are being tried at a court-martial for the man's murder. On the recording, a soldier rejects another's offer to shoot the man in the head is too obvious. Then he shoots the Afghan in the chest. After the shooting, the soldier tells his colleagues, quote, obviously, this doesn't go anywhere. I just broke the Geneva Convention. Listen carefully. I think he would do to us. I know. Exactly. Obviously, this doesn't go anywhere, fellas. Yeah, Roger, mate. I've just broken the convention. Yeah, Roger. The soldier who shot the Afghan man has claimed he believed the man was already dead. The Senate's approved a landmark bill to ban workplace discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Ten Republicans joined Democrats in supporting the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA. House Speaker John Boehner has opposed the bill, casting doubt on whether we'll even get a vote in the House. The Food and Drug Administration's taking steps to effectively ban harmful artificial trans fats from food. The agency's proposed restrictions would target trans fat containing oils found in products from frozen pizza to microwave popcorn. FDA chief Margaret Hamburg said the rules could prevent 20,000 heart attacks and 7,000 deaths from heart disease each year. The Pakistani Taliban has chosen a hardline militant commander as its new leader, dealing a blow to renewed peace talks with the Pakistani government. Mullah Fazlullah ordered the assassination attempt on Pakistani schoolgirl Malala Yousafzai. He's rejected peace talks and vowed to avenge the death of his predecessor, who was killed by a U.S. drone strike last week. The United States lost its voting rights today at the global cultural agency, UNESCO, after failing to pay its dues for three years in protest over the agency's recognition of Palestine. U.S. law compels the automatic withholding of funds from U.N. agencies that accept Palestine as a member, which UNESCO did in 2011. UNESCO protects sites with cultural significance and promotes issues ranging from press freedom to girls' education. U.S. contributions, which accounted for nearly a quarter of the agency's overall budget, have forced it to slash a number of programs. The heads of Britain's three spy agencies face questions before the British Parliament Thursday about surveillance practices revealed by Edward Snowden, including collaboration with the U.S. National Security Agency. Sir John Sars, head of MI5, claimed Sno MI6, claims Snowden's leaks have caused damage. The leaks uh, from uh, Snowden uh, have been very damaging. Uh, they put our operations at risk. Uh, it is clear that our adversaries are rubbing their hands with glee. Uh, Al-Qaeda is lapping it up. Brazil and Germany, meanwhile, introduced a United Nations resolution to curb unfettered electronic surveillance. According to Snowden's leaks, both countries have been targeted by U.S. spying, including surveillance of their leaders. Brazil's ambassador to the United Nations spoke before a U.N. committee that deals with human rights. As President Dilma Rousseff stated as she opened this year's general debate, we are facing a situation of grave violations of human rights and civil liberties as a result of mass surveillance of personal communications and collection of data. She made clear that in the absence of the right to privacy, there can be no true freedom of opinion and expression and no effective democracy. Surely, all of those in Brazil and Latin America who fought against authoritarianism and censorship are keenly aware of this reality. New revelations Thursday highlight the spying efforts of U.S. agencies beyond the NSA. According to The New York Times, the CIA pays AT&T more than $10 million a year to mine its phone records database, which includes international calls involving Americans. The company cooperates voluntarily with the CIA, turning over records from a vast collection that extends beyond its customers to include calls handled by its equipment. 
And new details have emerged on the FBI's surveillance of antiwar.com. Documents received under a records request by the ACLU of Northern California show the FBI monitored the site for at least six years, in part because it mistakenly believed a founding editor had threatened to hack the FBI's website. An ACLU attorney says the surveillance violated federal law. The Federal Aviation Administration has released an initial plan for drones to be used in U.S. skies more widely by 2015. The rules require agencies that will oversee domestic drone testing to release plans for privacy, but it does not lay out what the practices should be. In a statement, an ACLU legislative council called for concrete restrictions on how data from drones can be used and how long it can be stored. According to the FAA, more than 80 law enforcement agencies are already authorized to use drones. The Toronto Star has released a new video of embattled Toronto Mayor Rob Ford engaging in a profanity-laced tirade about how he wants to murder an unidentified person. He dies right now, brother. Brother, you've never seen me go for that. Here you go, brother. But when he's done, I'll rip his throat open. I'll pull his eyes out. I will f***ing his death. I'll make sure that I'm dead. I need to f***ing him. Let's make sure he's dead. It'll be over five minutes, brother. So I've done it ten minutes out. After you went brother, it'll be a bad time. I'm a sick dude. Toronto Mayor Ford has faced months of controversy following reports of another video showing him smoking from a crack pipe and making bigoted remarks. Ford apologized for the latest video, saying he was extremely inebriated. He's facing increasing calls to resign. Prosecutors in Illinois are refusing to bring criminal charges against a Chicago police officer who fatally shot an unarmed African-American man in June 2011. Flint Farmer's death was the third shooting in a second fatality in a span of six months by Officer Gildardo Sierra. Sierra admitted having multiple beers before work that night. Video from a dashboard camera appears to show Officer Sierra standing over Farmer and shooting him in the back. He fired 16 shots, seven hit Farmer. Prosecutors say he reasonably mistook Farmer's cell phone for a gun. Police in Iowa fatally shot an unarmed 19-year-old in a pickup truck on the campus of Iowa State University on Monday. Tyler Comstock's father called police after his son took off in the truck following a dispute over his father's refusal to buy him cigarettes. Police say Comstock rammed a cruiser and refused to turn the truck off. But dispatch audio shows police were twice told to back off. This is the second of two warnings. We know the suspect, so we can probably back it off. Less than a minute later, a voice announces Comstock has been shot. Comstock's step-grandfather told the Des Moines Register, quote, So he didn't shut the damn truck off. So let's fire six rounds at him? We're confused and we don't understand, he said. In Springfield, Illinois, anti-corruption activists rained fake money onto the State House of Representatives Wednesday in a protest against government corruption in Illinois and around the country. The group Represent Us has staged similar actions in Michigan and New York. Director Josh Silver said in a statement, quote, "...money talks in Illinois, so we decided to speak to House members in the only language they seem to understand." And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.